do you have a little hook to like intro for the Miller Moore Short Show? We're, we'll get one. We'll get one. <laughs> no, nah, we'll get one. We gotta. I'll just sing you guys we in. gotta do like a better. Uh, <laughs> we I want to get a different graphic later. Later, like yeah. I want to get some some cool stuff going on with after the new academy, and we'll have a cool intro mm-hmm. with a hook like he's talking about. <laughs> Isaac will be all over it. All right. All right. Welcome to another special edition of the Miller Martial Arts Show Film Sessions. We're here with my brother, Micah, the Maverick Miller. Down. Go back to podcast episode one. Find out who he is. He's made some appearances on some of the other uh, iterations of the show slash podcast. Different ones. Um, today we're going to be going over... A cool tournament that happened in September of 2005 where he fought twice in one night and we had mentioned it in his podcast, some of the uh, things that happened uh, that night that were so ridiculous and would never be allowed to happen today. And we wanted to watch the fight with you guys and step by step break it down. Oh, it's so embarrassing. I I can still remember the... Walking out the second fight. <laughs> yeah. The, and uh, just the way it looks, it's so <laughs> bad. <laughs> it's like one of my favorite memories that I, and I wasn't even there. Yeah. One of my favorite memories is just doing a video playback of the video that you guys are going to see of Micah's walkout. <laughs> so, um, uh, set the stage. September 2005. You're in high school. Oh. No, I'm in college. You're in college. Yeah. You're one semester of college that you did. Yeah. We're doing that, and we're doing bagel bakery work, and we're doing ultimate fighter training. And that's life. That's life from 5 a.m. to, like, you know how late training would end. Yeah. Like, some those nights in Griffin, sometimes it'd be, like, 12, 31. 1 a.m., 2 a.m., getting home. And, like, that was just, the life was, like, I remember it was the most exhausted I've just ever been. Like waking up at five, school, work, and train. School, work, train, and just being like, like really finding out like, like what time is and like how much of it there is and just how much can you actually do. Mm-hmm. Like that was my period where I could just I remember just being like so overwhelmed. Like every day I had like an hour to myself. I remember after work between training where I could like actually just like kind of like sit back. But the rest was, it was dude, it was just a million miles an hour all day, every day of just schoolwork train, schoolwork train. Like my memory is not the best, but I, I thought that you attended your little semester in college while you were in Athens. No, no. 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 So where'd you go? Where'd you go do the, your semester at? Um, Macon state. Okay. Did some, some, uh, schooling there and then we did a little bit at GMC too but okay May, th- I was at Macon State at this this time yeah okay but you didn't do a whole year right okay um so you <laughs> you're doing bagel bakery uh college mm-hmm. and training well school first but yeah 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 those three things all right well uh, I wasn't I wasn't at the fight. I uh, Charles McCarthy uh, chainsaw Charles McCarthy. Mm-hmm. He had a wedding, and I was at his wedding, so I I wasn't gonna, able to be there for this uh, night. But uh, and I joined top team just a few months after this. Like I'd I'd uh, I'd flown down to like live there. I think that I moved there in December of 2005. So just a few months after this, I I made the move. But I was there and training. Uh, with you guys for the preparation um, for this bout, and Bubby fought that night too, right? Yeah, he lo- he lost a Scott Farhat that night, Was that the night that wasn't it? I don't remember because because okay. he crushed a guy in Macon one time, and then me and yeah. him fought another time where he crushed a guy. So the the time that I wasn't there, you fought, and then he fought, and who else fought that night? Did our dad fight that yeah, night? He fought. Okay. Um, if you want to call it that. <laughs> uh, remember Blake had a had a fight where the guy no showed. Oh so, yeah, yeah. So he no showed the ring. So yeah. I guess I guess he was there for the rules meeting, but after that he was just like 
<laughs> when, I guess <laughs> once the tape started to come out, it was just like, nah, man. Nah. So this was on uh, Matthew Waller, uh, his show, Submission Fighting Open. I don't know. This was like 10 or 11 or something like that. And um, if you didn't check out the the podcast that we did um, with Waller, that's episode seven. Um, but this was on his show. There's no uh, Georgia Athletic Commission at the time. The ISCF was the, the sanctioning body. And Matt ran a pretty jam up show. Like they had fight doctors and they had, yeah. you know, EMTs. and Because they would make fun of the guys. They would make fun of that culture of people who didn't right. do these things. So it, it's like people act like you need. It's good that you have like sanctioning and all that. Yeah. But he was somebody who you could 100% know that he's, whether it's sanctioned by this people, that people, he's doing going to, he's or he's going to do like what's right. Right. Know? Yeah. Just because that's, that's who he that's was. That's who he was. Yeah, yeah. He wanted to run a good show, and he was, like, legitimizing the sport at yeah. the time. You know, like, that was a big deal. It was like, uh, you know. Because he didn't want to be these people that he's making fun of, you know, that are part of that community that we were in. Yeah, because you know? when Senator John McCain had it, like, banned in the United States, uh, like, later it was, like, legalized, you know. And so, like, we wanted it to stay legal. We wanted to... Uh, help it get to the next level, you know, where we saw the ultimate fighter in the UFC take it to where it is now. So this was like in the, um, all right, you guys, you know, the responsibility is on you. Here's the keys to the car. Mom and dad are going to go out for a vacation at the beach. When we get home, the house better not be trashed. Mm -hmm. So like this is that phase of mixed martial arts, you know, in the country. And while I ran a a jam up show uh, from the video, um, the house looks packed. Yeah, I remember we had a good crowd that night, and I was really, really stoked. Yeah, and um, you had, was Scott Harper in your corner, or did he just do the walkout? He didn't fight that um, night, right? No, I don't think, I don't, no, I don't think he did. He was, I remember him he was in there, my though. corner, though. Okay. All right, Donnie Blue. He did, he did my dad's corner, too, pretty sure. Did Donnie Blue fight this night? Nah. But Trey Brown did, right? He may have. Okay. But there couldn't have just been me, Blake, and our dad. No, right? no, yeah. definitely not. Yeah, huh. uh, we'll ha- we'll have to you know go back yeah. and, and uh, find one of those old team Praxis DVDs where uh, uh, it's hard to Cam distinguish, made. like because it was all at the same venue, you know. Right, so I keep forgetting like which cards were because they all they all look the same. The indoors always look the same too, you know. Yeah, the ring was the same. Macon City Auditorium. Yeah. Uh, where we graduated, you know, and f- got to fight. Yeah. Pretty cool venue. I got to see uh, Daya Ali Davis fight there. That was pretty cool. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah cool. Yeah. He came with Coach Howard, you know. Mm-hmm. This is when Coach Howard was still not only with us, but was still cornering and coaching. Mm-hmm. Uh, Daya, remember, like, uh, I do Coach, remember him he saying, he stepped back like, for it and, like, he had, like, Panama and some other guys training him. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, but it, was, it got to a point where Coach Howard was like, I can't do this no more, you know, kind of, kind of thing. Yeah. I remember he brought up making a, a training one day. I was like, Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I had just fought Dan Lozon. So I was like, I had just fought Dan Lozon. I think it was. And, uh, ended up Dan Lozon or it was, uh, Ross Pearson. Either way, I'd taken like a trip to Chicago for a little bit and then mm-hmm. I came back home and he was like in Macon with Howard. And then we t- took him to, uh, it used to be called Dea and then it was called something else. And now it's called some nightclub downtown, you mm-hmm. know, and uh, we, we ended up taking him there and we had a pretty good time. Like he didn't get to see any parts of Macon except for just downtown. Mm-hmm. You know, that's where, where they were staying. But uh, that was cool, too. We'll have to bring him on and do his fight uh, yeah, that yeah. happened in Middle Georgia because yeah. I f- I filmed it on my little flip cam. Those little things that the UFC gave us for Christmas. Mm-hmm. UFC used to give us these little Christmas gifts with an actual Christmas card, and uh, each year the gift changed. And w- one year it was like, what do they give guys now? The flip cam. Uh, I think it was uh, nothing. <laughs> uh, but it was like the flip cam and a and a card, like an actual card signed by you know. Dana mm-hmm. and Lorenzo and I think Buffer was on there too. I, I can't remember. some they were cool. But uh one year it was like a flip cam, one year it was like the iPad 
two. Mm -hmm. And then another year it was like a $500 gift card to UFC.com. It was like that, you know, as Mm -hmm. I can't really recall all of them, but, um, yeah, cool times. So I, I recorded with that flip cam. So I, I, Daya has like since asked me for it. I sent it to him or brought it in on a USB drive, which I never got that USB drive back. You know, said, I'm giving you the footage, but not the USB. I don't think he ever gave me that USB back. <laughs> I'm going to have to tag you, <laughs> tag you in this, Daya. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but so yeah, like you're in first semester of college and we're at Macon City Auditorium and, I'm in my, Miami, South Florida, and uh, do you remember what did you remember, you remember like the the preparation, like the training camp leading up to this? Hmm. This was your first tournament, right? Yeah. Um, I I don't really remember much, aside from just the regular, like, just the regular schedule of mm-hmm. just you know the. Because everything was so regimented, like I told you. Like, yeah. Like Tuesday, so, Thursday, yeah, make it. Make it. Monday, Wednesday, and sometimes a Friday. Yeah. Griffin. Griffin. So you know, we just I'm training with who's there. I'm training yeah. with who we got. You know, uh, we had some good guys. Donnie Blue is still yeah. like a big part of of helping me out. Um, but then you have Blake and Nitro and Jan Geiserman yeah. and uh, like Weeby's there from time to time. Uh, Cam. Cam, Cam, Cam trained a lot. Yeah, Cam trained a um, lot. I remember training with you a lot, but like I don't really remember training with Weeby too much. There must have been a time yeah, where Weeby kind of came back. Yeah, but I wasn't there or something. Yeah. And he would only come to Griffin. Okay. So, yeah, we're just just doing the standard, just trying to get better. Yeah. That way. You yeah. Know, uh, just doing what it takes. Like Blue was my guy, man. He would. He's the one who would really drive with me to Griffin. So those three days a week we went to Griffin. He'd always come to to Buffalo and Granny's, pick us up, you know. And, and Hell yeah! Off. And uh, he was th- he was a big part of like helping me get out to be able to train that much too. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and we don't know if he fought or not that night. I don't I don't remember him fighting. Macon. We'll have to look the card up and and yeah. check it out. Maybe at the end of this, we'll we'll bring it up. Did um, he fight in Macon? Yeah, he. I remember, I remember he lost. Macon. He lost to Carlton Spalding. But I thought that I was think. at. Uh, was that not in Macon? Like Cowboys or something. Or did Trey fight Carlton? Spalding, in Macon. Okay, well, somebody fought in Macon yeah. against Carlton Spalding. Um, yeah, this may have been that one. One of, uh, I don't know if he was a George Allen guy or a. I think it Mr. Was. Gary uh, Golden kickboxer, yeah. or if they were the same. I don't. I don't really remember. Um, I was supposed to fight him at one point, too. Yeah. He just fell apart. <laughs> A lot, a lot of almost in mm-hmm. that time. It was like everybody should have fought everybody back then. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, you remember anything like in particular, maybe like uh, when you found out who your first opponent was going to be or the weigh-ins? Did you know who you were going to fight at the weigh-in? No, I didn't know anybody. Didn't so know you anybody. didn't know that didn't you were going to fight? Didn't see the guys at, at all. Either. Okay. Okay. So you're just, all right, going to fight it my first matter. tournament. Yeah, it didn't matter. All right, well, let's let's get into the first fight. Okay. Cause it was like, like training where we trained. It was like, you know people would show up, and you didn't know anything about them, and you would just get it on. You know, like in training, I do people that you didn't even know. It was, ah, it was like that. And I hit mute earlier too. Sorry. So here we are. Yeah. So we got Force Griffin as the ref. Yeah. And Forrest this Griffin. guy, we got Patrick Norwood here. His first opponent. He's real. This is. Uh, I remember him being like really jacked for the weight class. Oh, I'm, I'm oh, getting crazy. Oh, yeah, we gotta watch that again. Like, you can't just. You don't get the right to do something crazy and let's not talk about it. Whoa. Yes. Yeah, so we. Like I just. I remember. What I what I lacked in like the actual technical skill of what I'm doing here is I'm still, I, I know what I'm doing in that I'm really not afraid at all to just like jump in the fire and like get it going at this point. Um, so I remember f- throwing that kick just to get him to really open up just to let him know, like, like it's real right now and we're, and we're going. 
Yeah, you know? and and you can see he's ready for it because yeah, and you just, turn around and he threw this counter yeah. right hand as hard as he could. Yeah. <laughs> so I just remember uh, just not being not being afraid of just like starting really fast. And even though I didn't have a lot of really good striking training here, I just wanted to open him up like right away, get him to like start getting really aggressive, maybe so that I could take him down a little easier. All right. Whoa. Man, that was so, wild. Both those strikes missed you somehow. Well, I think the last one got me, didn't it? Maybe it grazed you. Yeah, it hit, hit me a little bit. Good little single so entry. Just, yeah, we're, we're yeah just doing, we're doing our, our our technical technical wrestling is really the the anchor of what I'm I'm working with at this point. Cool guard I'm slam. Fighting. Yeah, trying to move him away and move him closer to the voice of who I was. See, I'm going towards the camera. You know. Mm-hmm. So just trying to do that. Um, Good ground. Oh, I hit my. I broke my hand right there. Oh man, I'm gonna. I'm not great at this yet, guys. So let's see if I can freeze it. Moment that it happens. So even though I'm smaller, I'm trying. I'm like bullying this guy, or trying to at least. And boom, right there, my right hand. <laughs> There we go. There yeah, it is. Right there. Look that. at that. You know, he slipped the right hand from his back, and, and I remember just my hand wasn't right after that. Think how lucky he is in this moment. Look how far your shoulder and face are away from him, mm -hmm. and your right hand is still touching the freaking floor. Yeah. Like, that's pretty <laughs> incredible. That's cool. The, the, the single leg that you switched off and you doubled off on was pretty good. Yeah, man, that's that's just the wrestling training that I had. Oh, and you get stood and, uh, up, Forrest, Forrest come Stan, on, Forrest. And this this is one thing that's a common theme throughout the whole fight that makes it a lot more difficult than it should have been. Is he he keeps standing so, uh, oh. so coming outside of the ring? Yeah, so so I have to work so hard to get this guy down over and over and over again, and he keeps standing us up and, and doesn't let me like. And even though my my passing and and kind of the ground ground stuff, especially on top, isn't that great at this point, he's making it really hard to stand me up. Constantly. And some refs would bring you to the middle. Some refs would just steer you out of the ropes, mm -hmm. and some refs would stand you back up. Yeah. And Forrest is a stand up guy, obviously. Yeah. Oh, another good takedown. Yeah. So you're like you're wasting a lot of energy because he's getting free get get ups. And yeah. you're having to redo the takedown, so it doesn't matter if he doesn't have much wrestling. He yeah, he he's, does, he's not having to work to get up. He's a striker. Yeah. You can yeah. just tell from how he's throwing the heavy hands. A boxer, it looks like. And I remember, his, like you can see it here, his his sole bottom game is double overhooks. Yeah, like he's real because he's really strong, and he's double overhooking me every time I'm in the guard. Yeah, so I'm just trying to get to half <clears> and punch. Nice. You moved to half guard real well, too. And oh. This is just some good scrambling done by him. Yeah, you're you just know, not having the, the strength. Yeah, the, the strength isn't there. So it's like you're kind of going for a knee reap here, yeah, but, to reap the, but reap you're the almost leg. too flexible. Yeah. It's like you have the flexibility but not the strength to push him off of you. And he's hitting me pretty good in some of these. See, most people would be reaping the knee and they'd be on the ribs. You're still flat on your back. Look. Yeah. So it's it's like and your I flexibility just, is almost I, a detriment in this particular phase of your grappling ability. Well, I think if I I knew what I was doing a little more, like I could I could have used my hands to push him away better, you know, and and expose the heel. But I don't I I don't quite know what I'm doing yet because I have a good position. Yeah, you were pushing forward and back instead of I trying to a, get a new I had angle. a full I had a full triangle. Um, and leg was underneath inside and I, I, I could have gotten some heel exposure if I just used my, my hands as frames a little better, mm -hmm. but now I'm full guard. I like your Rufio haircut. Yeah, yeah, that was that was some fun college stuff. Do something crazy. College boy. Col yeah, college <laughs> hair. 
Oh yeah. So you had a you have a good entry, but your drive was kind of weaker on that one. Oh, oh, no, but you I'm, you swapped tired, off because I'm tired. Yeah. <laughs> and then you just get real leveragey, you know. I just swing the leg over and just like slowly sag him down. Yeah, he's using these double overhooks to just be like stall. Yeah. And then like he's trying to hulk, he's trying to hulk you out of these positions. Because I remember, see, I got mount, but he's still got strong double overhooks. Yeah. Physically, I just can't. I can't deal. Yeah. He's a probably just a little older than you. That's the end of the first round. <laughs> you can just see like his back muscles and arms, and that's a pretty exciting first round. It's pretty much all you. You know. Uh, a couple yeah. close calls on some bombs he was uh, throwing. He hit me pretty good from, you know, when I had that knee reap and he kind of just crushed it. So was that? Uh, let's try to go back here. It's obviously Cam. Who's, who's this? Scott Harper. That's Harper. Mm-hmm. Okay. No, that's a fight doctor. Okay, so that's, okay. uh, I forget his name. Horace is hanging out using his <laughs> high level referee skills to make sure you're still in the fight. Yeah. <laughs> What's Cam telling you here? The call? I don't know. Okay. Looking back, though, he always gave good advice. Oh yeah, he always he was always real calm if he needed to be. Yeah, I can't remember him ever raising his voice at me. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm now that I think about, it, he was always a good corner. He's always he always had, you know, he had good advice to tell you. He was never too emotional. He could he was excited but not like too much. I don't know. He he had a good uh, he had a good demeanor. Dude, every time you strike, he strikes. Yeah, because he wants to eat. Yeah. Let's see, look, take him down, stand me back up. Oh, man. I just, <laughs> Forrest, come on, just turn his head into the center. Just brutal. Here oh. we go again. So just trying to stay... Oh, technically sound, but like, you know, not get hit too bad on the feet and then get some kind of grappling exchange. That's why you see here, even though I don't have the strength to like keep wrestling anymore, I'm still trying to pull him into the ground. I had a close yeah. triangle set up there. Yeah. And like your half guard game had not developed yet. So like you instantly went to guard from that kind of. Yeah. I, wanted half full, I always wanted full guard. Yeah. In, in those days. So he's moving backward. You're yeah. moving forward. He's backing up from you. You're throwing I, some I'm good so, up kicks. I'm so tired at this point. Just very, very tired. From your nine takedowns that you've already got. Yeah. Just. <laughs> I wonder where we really are on takedowns. It's got to be like seven or something. So just trying to see... If he'll play the ground with me at all, he obviously wants me to stand, but he's not forced to telling him if you want me to stand, then just stand up and he's going to stand me up. But he doesn't. He just kind of hovers over me, which gives me, you know, a little extra time to rest and just the open option of like, okay, is he going to come to the ground? Then, okay. If he doesn't, then I'll just continue to rest until I can get my grappling game going, get an entry going at some point. There you go. That's Nick That's Diaz was known enough. for that, like sitting up just like that from that bottom position and getting that single leg. Yeah. That was really good. So sometimes I'll hear people like make arguments for the, why the octagon's better than the ring. And this is like the only time I'll ever hear the argument is like stuff like that where it's like, man, like the, the action is severely inhibited by what, what was happening there. Mm-hmm. But I pref- still prefer the ring, but maybe like a bigger ring than this, you know? Yeah. 
and that's one thing that people do a lot is they if Whew. like a lot of the problems that we have with the cage people will will counter with ring arguments because the ring isn't perfect but just because it's perfect doesn't mean it's not better because it is better <laughs> yeah but score another people say down. if it's if you know if it's not like the perfect ring environment then you shouldn't change it from the cage it's your second but mount of the fight yeah, second mount again the double overhook super strong Nice. Him out and then now it's just time to give it to him. I hear you. You can see some people and jumping up and down in the background. He explodes here. Um, you got the a back too high, but I'm trying to. Do, I'm trying to stay on the back. Working that figure four grip, kind of leads to arm bars and triangles. Yeah. Should have went triangle. Yeah. But wasn't a lot of time left anyway. So I I'd say like he looked good when he's standing over you for that little bit. But if you actually look at the transitions and look at what happened in that round, you still won that round. Yeah. Like he didn't land any big strikes. You took him down a couple times, got the mount, uh, threw some up kicks and low kicks on the bottom. Uh, pretty solid round and the atmosphere seems like they're blowing up you could see some people jumping up and down and screaming you know I mean I feel I'm winning at this point but I also feel like I don't have a lot of control and I'm having to expend a lot of energy to get these wins so I'll just hit pause before we start that this uh third round um one thing I was commenting on the crowd just then and, like, why? Why were they all, like, on edge? It's because it wasn't – they didn't watch it every weekend like they watch it now. Mm -hmm. And yeah, all yeah. of these people that are here, they weren't all Pride fans or even UFC fans. Mm -hmm. They just knew that extreme fighting was coming to their town. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of these people, they had never even seen this on TV before. Mm -hmm. They knew of it, or maybe they saw, like, one of those old VHS tapes of uh, – um, Dan Seven versus Ken Shamrock or something, but mm -hmm. they had never seen this live. So the one cool thing about the fights that were back then is that the crowd, they're like into it like that. You know, there's mm -hmm. a, a anxiousness within the, the fan, the fans, you know, mm -hmm. and um, you'd hear them yelling the whole time or jumping up and down or squeezing the person next to them, even if they didn't know you. You know, now that's only reserved for the people that like are close to you, that mm -hmm. know you. But back yeah, then yeah. it'd be like anybody and everybody in the crowd was like, Oh my God, mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. Yeah, I remember getting my ass up one more time. <laughs> I was really tired, but just let's go. Well, faint. He land. He he's landed every low kick he threw. Cool back kick. He should have thrown more of them. Oh, good flying knee. See, I get a little. Cute. Oh, <laughs> I'm trying to like. I'm trying to like feel it. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to. I'm because I'm so tired. Ah. I'm trying to get some confidence going. Get some kind of swag going. And then, oh man, he hits oh, me with the got, right hand. Okay, we're going back. We got. We did the squirrely legs dance there. Yeah. Oh, I mean, this is this is the hardest I've ever been hit in my life. Oh, Still, just to this the day, temple? To this day. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Deontay Wilder. Oh. Oh. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's the oh, hardest yeah. I've ever hit. So go back one more time. Yeah. I mean, this is this is close, man. Like, so, a ref might have stopped this. I just want to start from the beginning of the round. Like, had some cool stuff happen. Oh. Yeah, cool spinning kick. What? Oh, yeah. So close on that. Hit him in the shoulder, it looked like. Yeah. Thought maybe go back to the well. No. Boom. So uh, right here, he hits me. Oh, I, I remember my hands. Like, I can't feel my hands. So I feel like they're... I feel like they're down, but at this point right here, I can see that they're not. Right. But... 
I can't feel my hands at all. Okay. So. Okay. Well. I, so oh. Stop right here. Uh. <laughs> so right here, I see him coming, and all I can think is, I can't feel my hands, and he's coming in to finish me, and for some reason, I'm not freaking out. Right. Either. I'm just like. You're just thinking like, okay, so how do I get my hands feeling back? Which is a ridiculous thing to even think, right? <laughs> just how do I how do I start feeling my hands again? <laughs> like that, like you know, some people like f- try to find a way out. Yeah. Some people are just like, okay, how do I feel my hands again? Yeah. That that's all because it's like all you can do. You're not like, how am I gonna come back and win this fight and. You know, not get destroyed. It's just like, okay, how do I feel my hands? And when again? you get rocked like this, that your your way of thinking is not normal. Yeah. But oh, boom. so right at right here. So as soon as my knees hit the ground and like he came in, like my hands came back. Right. And then you just start fighting on instinct here, you know. Yeah. And he is just he's hitting me really hard. Boom. Yeah, I'm that's how you turn your face. Oh, he has my neck. And just ragdoll on me. Just squeeze in. He got a little excited on that on that choke attempt. Yeah. And he's got mount or half guard. And he's and now he's just going in for the kill. So he's really opening with his punches. Yeah, good and hand then fighting there. Right there. Oh, I get seal on the he, triangle. Because he wants to, he wants to punch. Yeah. And he, uh, you know, he he thought he had me, and he almost did. You're so he, but he just didn't have the the defense and awareness while he was trying to finish me on the ground. To yeah, you were in a to, good spot. To know I was, I was still alive. You know. Oh yeah, awesome. Like had to had to endure a little yeah, bit. Yeah, had of to dig it out. Bull man. crap right there at the end, you know. Because those were hard shots, man. Hard Damn. shots. There's Blake. <laughs> you know, uh, say it again. Hardest I've ever been hit in my entire life, for sure. Forrest saying, "Come on, crowd, give it up." Yeah. So, I didn't see, but you got lacerated in this? Yeah, it's over the eye. Yeah, when? At what point? While he was punching me <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> uh, third round or? Yeah, right, okay. right there. So, okay. so he hits me and I go squirrely. And then okay, and that while final we're on the barrage. Ground, yeah, okay. we're just smashing me. He, he opens me up over the eye. Okay, so you go back to the locker room. What's happening back there? Just the, you just, you just, you know, the, the chaos of the, of the locker room, you know? Hold on, fuck this thing. Yeah. You know, I hit mute and it's like every video wants to start it up again. That's bull crap. Go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> just the chaos of the locker room. You know, you have the locker room, the pre-fight locker room is a really like unique uh, place with just a ton of anxious energy and like. You know, just that from pro wrestling to fighting to bo- whatever. It's just like this conveyor belt of chaos and like anxiety and like people getting jacked up, you know. Yeah. And you got your teammates back there because it was a local card. So it's yeah. like your teammates are gassing you up. Yep. You know. And uh, you can heat, you know, it's like the gladiator arena where you can hear the, the crowd, you know, you can hear the reactions, you know, the big pops. Yeah, because um, we don't have monitors back. Yeah, the, you know. Oh, you hear so you're like, just ah, hearing it. Yeah. So you're just like, oh, something crazy happened. And you know, like, you know, something crazy hey, happened or something wild's happened. You're on it. You're on in three fights. Yeah. And then when the next fight ends in thirty seconds, you're like, <gasps> yeah, <laughs> two fights. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a countdown, but the seconds that count down, they're not like, they're not, they're unvariable. Right. You know, it's like one second, which is a fight, is like. 15 minutes the other's 30 seconds and it can it can happen quick but i'm just crashed out man we we laid back there and uh the doctor had sewn me up he sewed you up yes because i was cut over the eye pretty bad so he sews me up and they ask me if i want to keep going because there's another fight there's only a tournament 
Oh, tournament. and this guy, other guy, did he fight or no? No, he so he didn't fight. Okay, so, so his, opponent, had a guy, his opponent no-showed. Yeah, so we had a guy, he no-showed maybe at weigh-ins. I don't think he no-showed the day of the fight, but I could be wrong. But yeah, just a, a guy that Matthew had brought in from Oklahoma, you know, um, and the guy, the guy really wanted to fight because I remember him saying like how serious he was about it because he, I don't know if he paid for his travel or or what, but he he made a big commitment to just get there. Um, so Matthew definitely wanted to get him a fight, and the guy that I had just beat, they they were gonna take him and pair him up with the other guy just because I couldn't continue. But it was just let's go, you know, it just got sewn up. It's like we just had this we had this uh just this attitude for our team of just like pushing through everything and just it wasn't even uh it's not a tough guy thing. I don't know. It's just like it's just getting it done. It's you know you, wa- you want the hard road. Yeah. It's like you gotta have it, you know? Yeah. It's like I came here, this was the mission. Nothing else is acceptable short of the mission being accomplished. Yeah. And that's it. And when I say being a tough guy, like like I guess what I'm trying to say poorly is like we didn't get any we didn't get any like like we didn't get insta posts off this shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like we no, didn't get any there wasn't any like social play social points that you weren't we got even getting from it. you weren't getting a date from this. No. Like like you weren't getting <laughs> no, nothing. No. You you're not getting no. money. You're not getting any followers. You're not getting any likes. No, this video is not going viral. Hell, the video d- isn't even coming out until where are we at? Fifteen years after this fight took place. You know, like <laughs> you ain't getting shit. It's just glory is what it is. Yeah. It's like personal glory that that was uh, made special by like like our peer group, you know. Yeah. Like we valued it. Like like things things that things have currency because people value them, and like we valued this, you know. Mm-hmm. Like our peer group valued this, so like that's why like we were so gassed up to do this stuff, even though we didn't get any recognition or any kind of like extra anything. It was just that was this is the way you know? yeah like we, yeah this we liked it and another thing like you ain't get even getting any sympathy days off from the bagel baker either you know no. your ass got to be there on monday black eye and stitches at all at, at least looking at me like god what happened to you uh, at, at least until <laughs> bill tells you to get the hell out of there <laughs> all right well so, so just lay down here man just lay down got stitched up and i just i didn't get off the floor until they called me again didn't warm up, didn't do anything. <laughs> just laid on the floor. Sat up like the just, Undertaker. Yeah, just sat up like the Undertaker when they when they tell you it's time to go and it was just time to go. Time to go to work. All right. So and just look at this. This <laughs> just look at that left eye. Just a wreck. We're sorry, guys. It's not in 4K, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah, I mean, like the, your the, lip looks kind of. The kinda lip is a little beat up. The eyes really beat up, and that I think that's the one that has the cut over it. Man. And I can just imagine seeing this walk to the ring. You just think that you got this, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Especially that you see the two guys that I fought that are actual men that are just like they're, they're pretty jacked that you know they look like they're athletes. Yeah, but you know what? The crowd yeah. is even more into you because you look like that for the, for the second fight. Anyways, yeah. like it, for the first fight, they're like they're probably like, and this and this is what making this is the best making has to offer. I could break that kid, and then they see the first fight, and then they're instantly like screaming for you on the next yeah. one. You know, like when I with the fight that we did the first two fights that I had. Um, and even the one that, uh, the two that we did in Virginia, like this for the second fight there, so, we talked about this. They're so much more into it than the first fight mm-hmm. because the fans, they develop a connection because they watched you fight and then they're going to watch you fight again. There's like the, the Iron Man aspect mm-hmm. of it. He, he already came and did it once. Can he do it again? You know? <laughs> And it's like the and this guy's fresh. Yeah. Oh yeah. And so like that's and the non jacked up. They part. probably don't even really. They they probably don't even know that. But or know that that's uncommon. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> well, guys, we, we gave just this line somebody up and see how many guys he can beat. <laughs> he gets a buy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Forrest checking the gloves again. But oh, this is just part he, of putting on a show. Like Matthew said, he books what fifteen and you get eleven fights. Like, yeah. You no, know people aren't going to show up. So, so Forrest is touching your gloves. Like that's just what referees do. He's like, "Yep, you got a broken right hand, and there's clearly <laughs> stitches in your left eye. Yeah. Are you ready?" <laughs> like there aren't any regulations you're checking for. Like, yeah. All right, so. This older guy looks like a boxer wrestler. Mm-hmm. Then you take him down pretty good. He just crashes. You know, he, he comes after it real quick with hands. You know, you can see he's got some some bottom awareness. He's swinging arm bars. Yeah, sitting up good, too. Sitting up. Once oh, I, yeah, he got... I gave him space, he sat up. He got up good. Oh. Oh. Like I didn't get crushed with that. Oh man, that could have melted you. Trying to force a uh, more trap. Is this guy like a army vet or something? I noticed he's got camo Valley Tudo shorts <laughs> he on. He looks like it. And he looks like it. He looks like yeah. squared away. He moves like an army vet. <laughs> <laughs> Physically fit. <laughs> and so yeah, this he's is trying to stay behind his jab. He sees oh. me come in, gets my neck. You know. And this is where those thoughts guy. start going yeah, through your this mind. Is where the thoughts come in. Where this is where it comes. Like, you start to go one on one ain't so bad. One on one for the night. Yeah, you have to make you have to make up your mind. Like right here, you start thinking like one on one ain't so bad. Like I could I could tap right here, and there would be no there would be no shame. You know, there'd be no like you did some good work tonight. You know, but it just oh, and it gets gotta, out. You can hear that, and you just know it's like, it's just shit you got to push through. So I feel like this pace is, like, really good so far. I think that he bit off a little more than he could chew. Like, you're young and hungry, and, like, yeah, you already fought three rounds, but this guy came out pretty quick. Yeah. And I think that – I don't know if he had fought before. I was telling you before, like, I made guys start quick, too. Yeah. Like – I make them fight right away. There's an involuntary adrenaline dump when you make a guy fight like that. Body shots. Yeah, just just working the top game. Um, You know, being being taller, I'm I'm able to, uh, if I can just kind of get my posture back and sit up, I, I'm, I'm able to use my leverage and, and ground and pound pretty well from the top. But you you almost don't want to lean back too much because then you're you're playing that game of of do you let him up or do you crowd him a little bit and you know which allows him to get the posture if you do crowd him. So just trying to punch, open up a way to pass. He goes for a little. Rubber guard, mission control to hold me in place here. Well, 2005 rubber guard. Yep. Oh. <laughs> Takes away my base. He's squeezing hard. really hard on, on the arm bar attempts. That's the second one he's got where you could tell he well, was. Well, he didn't have the arm bar, but you could tell he, but he took my base away. Yeah. Even though he didn't have the arm bar. So, trying the Kamor trap again into an arm bar, which. Isn't very high percentage, but just trying to attack a submission. Oh, good low single. Yeah, so he forces my head down off like a Smith high single into a into a low low single, which is wrestling. His wrestling shoes helped me with that, by the way. Yeah, a good lot. little over under pass. Good timing on his roll. Yeah, but he he put his hand inside for that that one in one out scenario for the triangle, mm. which was a mistake on his part. So now I'm kind of in that triangle uh, set up from the back. You know what I'm trying to get. He gets out. He's starting to see that I shoot like right off his 
his first strike. Oh. Oh. Boom. 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 Let's watch that again. That was cool. Yeah, so I remember I threw a spinning back fist. It kind of hits. And it and he he it hits him a little bit and he thinks it's funny because it doesn't hurt him and I just sock him right in the face. Yeah. Just cuz he doesn't respect me. Oh, oh yeah, know? take that. <laughs> and a knee so to I'm the face. So I'm just a dude trying to trying to get in his face, you know. And I remember I remember him laughing like seeing him laugh like that and just being like, "No, nah, I'm going to get your respect." You know. <laughs> <laughs> just boom, right in the face. And it wasn't pretty. Wasn't technically sound, but <laughs> that ain't always what, what it's about. And this guy, wasn't that the same corner man from the... Yeah, fight? this guy didn't have a corner. Okay. This Oklahoma guy didn't have a corner. So he just, he so, drove or flew in because yeah, he wanted he to get some. Because he wanted to get some. And this guy's just giving him a little advice, I guess. This guy what? wanted me to rematch his his guy so bad you don't for say years for years this guy like hounded me <laughs> <laughs> trying to get, his guy to get this rematch <laughs> oh god well patrick no, back too, man. patrick norwood he wants his rematch god, i didn't get punched like in the cut and it just yeah explodes you know yeah like how the stitches don't open because it i didn't get one or two like i got a significant amount and how they didn't this didn't just explode over my eye is pretty insane. Oh, high kick. So, yeah. Which that cut him pretty bad. The, the high kick? Yeah. Kind of one so of those grazing back. ones. Go back. Yeah, happy to. Because, look, we're, he's, he's, he's exploded right now. He's a little puddle of blood in the high kick. So the high kick grazes the back. You can see it, it grazes oh, off the yeah. back. Oh, yeah. Hits the back. So we come into a scramble. Boom. I you know, I leave my neck exposed, trying for the, the double leg wrestling techniques I'm working. And he gets that the same gu- uh, guillotine set up. And yeah. He's, explo- he's, he's cut real bad on his back. Um, on the back of his head. Yeah, he's gushing. There's a pool already. <laughs> So I'm just trying to put my posture really, really heavy forward, take some of the pressure off my neck, and just know that I was here before, and uh, I got out before, and I, I can get out again. But he does have a good squeeze. That's a man squeeze. Yeah. That's the doctor checking his cut in the middle of the fight, <laughs> which is not allowed at all today. <laughs> It's just some uh, old school liberties being taken. So you're trying to pull out. He comes up with me. Yeah. Really oh. And then I'm just trying to wail. So I got my one posture. of those right hands was brutal. Oh yeah. And he was he out? Yeah, he was out. Okay. So right here, there's a nasty right hand that hits. Right there. Past the Boom. guard. It giving him the business. So that was that was a first for me with on like knocking somebody out because it was you know you train so much and right. then when you're really doing it to just you get in the ground and pound scenario and you're 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 wailing but to actually feel somebody like go limp on the second one and those third fourth fifth and sixth. Like they just put them out, and you can feel it. it felt like you're dribbling a basketball, yeah, you know. And it just it was a really wild, I just feeling to feel that for the first time, like in a real fight, to actually like feel them go out, you know, yeah. But yeah, man, crazy. Cam's like, yeah, not here felt, to steal your shine. I'm going to leave the ring right now while you get your hand yeah, raised. Felt, <laughs> felt awesome. I remember like Cam being like that too, that he was not there for like his glory. Like he didn't like stand behind you for the photos yeah, or anything. Yeah. Like he's like, good job. I'm going to get the hell out. of This, this is your time. That's pretty cool. Yeah.
So, so yeah, it felt good, man, because uh, like like we talked before, like I hated school. School wasn't my thing. There was nothing in school that interested me. I hated being. I looking back now, it definitely feels like I was forced into this, like square peg into the round hole. Like, like you know, you gotta go and you gotta keep doing it until you just eventually find something that you're gonna do, and then you're gonna go on and do it. And I like find like I was going to school and still doing college, and I just hated it. Like I hated the college. But then there, it was like, dude, I was I was a rock star. This this like, is where I'm made to be. Like this is what I'm supposed to do. Like I'm over here excelling, like beating odds. Like I, like I got a a room or a, a a place full of people who are like chanting me and like telling me I'm the heart of making and like yeah. this stuff. <laughs> and like I'm I'm in a classroom these other times doing this shit that I don't want to do. And I remember just like just eventually coming to that point where and and this is what helped. Yeah. get me to that point you know yeah. like, like that's what i need to be doing like that's where i feel alive not at this this classroom doing english with or whatever fundamental classes i got to do before i do the next one to do the next one to do the next one it was like that's a no brainer for yeah. sure so that that's you know the like those moments is what helped ultimately uh, steer me down that path to taking it more serious so like after the fight what are some of the things that were said or what'd you take from those fights? Good and bad. Uh, I guess if you do the bad first, you're definitely doing, you're doing fights and you're doing situations that looking back, it's like, like you want to get good experience, but you don't want to be, I feel like you don't want to be too outgunned in some areas as an amateur. Mm -hmm. I think, I don't think that I should have been taking on guys who were that, that much bigger, that much stronger, had the ability to like hurt me in that way. You know, like looking, looking at the amateur system now, it's like, damn, some of that is like good that I wish I could have had, Mm -hmm. but then you look at the the positive where it's like, you know, you, you've, you've seen stuff that you can overcome and, you know, you've, you know that you can dig deep and like, like beat some of these odds and, and come out on top. And like, you know, you're on the right track when you're, when you're winning, you know? So would it have been better to hold off and, and not do those fights? I don't know that young, you know what I mean? Like, but like we, if you were trying to groom the ideal yeah. fighter, that is probably too much too soon, especially in today yeah. in today's. Because uh, I'm eight, I'm still 18 here. Yeah, you know? yeah, not still not been trained very long. Yeah, but like that's what also made you get to a certain level very quickly. It molded you and gave you the confidence that you can do this. That yeah. you can fight a fresh guy mm-hmm. after fighting three rounds. You can fight and, another and we're, guy. And we're learning. You're learning fighting through the lens of fighting. Which that sounds kind of dumb, but like so many people, they learn so many martial that is, arts. That is dumb. They they learn so many. They, no, they learn so many martial arts f- through this like kind of sport perspective, and then you got to take all that stuff from sport and then throw it into a real fight and make it work. And we were just doing like the real thing all the time, and kind of like doing the martial arts and viewing all the martial arts that that I'm practicing through the fighting lens. So mm-hmm. I know everything that I'm kind of learning is especially like um, the groundwork we're learning where we're I'm doing setups from people being able to hit me like all like from squ- square one. Yeah, we learn the, ra- the that range pretty quickly. Yeah. So I don't think I think as far as application of some of the stuff that I'm trying to do under the crazy intense speed of like MMA, I think that was beneficial. What did you guys do after the fight? Was there an after party? Was it at uh, Hooters or something like that? Yeah, like, probably, probably. Yeah, you know, we we went out and it was, it was fun. You know, um, just got to soak it in. Be the heart of making. Yeah, the glory. <laughs> the glory well, after party. Cool fight. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, it was good times. Yeah, well, uh, next time we'll have to go over the bout with Brian Bowles. Yeah, that, that's that's the big one. Yeah. Still, All right, still my favorite fight. Maybe we can get in. Uh, we can get Brett Moses, the promoter 
of that uh, bout to yeah, come no, here and that would be that would be great. And maybe we can get Brian Bowles to come in <laughs> and do that too. Even but, better. But, but uh, I think that would be cool. So I'll, I'll uh, just close with um, make sure that you guys stay tuned and. I hope that you guys are enjoying these film sessions and the breakdowns of the time that we came up in and kind of like look at it through what it's like now. It's kind of hard to see what it's like back then, but you can see this is 240p grainy ass footage, you know, like this is a day before the social media, before YouTube techniques were out there so available. Mm -hmm. This is when to watch a UFC fight in general was probably every other month. And, you know, Pride was every other month. You didn't have what you guys have now. And, uh, man, the techniques is huge, by the way. Yeah. Like the stuff that, that is being shared all the time now that's so available, man, that was just not the case at all. Yeah. And people will never, people, kids, like kids today, they'll never know, you know, like, yeah. What, Everything like was just everything was secret yeah. back when we were kind of coming up. You don't you nobody don't want, shared anything. Yeah, you with don't anybody. want them. You don't want to show them c- what what you're doing because you, they'll know. Like they'll it know. was all about your you're bringing like your special thing to the cage, and they're bringing their thing to the cage, and you don't quite know what each other's doing. It was more like that versus now. Just everything is just everything's out there. It's just on on a different level. Oh, good shit. All right. Signing off.